Hello everybody, I'm here today, this is Dr. Kari again to talk about small intestine bacterial overgrowth. If you missed my video last week or two weeks ago, whenever it came out, I um, was talking about how when you need to micromanage your diet or you have to live on a special diet in order to feel okay in your stomach, that it's very likely you have something else going on and that something else might be something called small intestine bacterial overgrowth. And in, was recommending that if you have that, that you get tested because small intestine bacterial overgrowth not only um, makes you not feel well, it has a whole host of other things that it does to the body and I'm gonna go through some of those today. But let's first start by talking about small intestine bacterial overgrowth and what it actually is. So in your body, you have trillions and trillions of microorganisms. Microorganisms are what we think of as bugs, right? They're microscopic things that live inside of us. And in most cases, what's in there helps us actually be healthy human beings. So having a diverse, healthy microbiome really helps us be um, resilient, healthy humans. And so one of the things I talked about in the last video was when we micromanage our diet and we eat very limited foods, the problem with that is that we end up having a very limited microbiome and a limited microbiome means that we're more susceptible to getting sick, right? So if we wanna be healthy and resilient, we need to have a really robust microbiome. And the way we have a robust microbiome is by making sure we're eating a very diverse diet. And most of us don't just don't do that. Most of us do what I call mono diets, where we eat sort of the same foods over and over and over and over. Many of us are doing that because when we eat other foods, we actually don't feel well, like was the case with myself. So SIBO is when those microorganisms that live in the large intestine where they should be, migrate into the small intestine in higher levels than what is normally found there. And when they're there, what happens is that they interrupt digestion. Instead of your body digesting the food properly, your body rots the food, ferments the food, and creates gas. So one main symptom of SIBO is bloating, but it doesn't always have to be the, the, the um, the symptom because if you're a person who is, like I said, eating really healthy and really limiting your sugar intake and only eating the foods you feel good with, you may be masking the symptoms of SIBO. So if you're a person that needs to do that, you wanna keep listening to this because this may be something that is going on for you. And like I said, it has other effects on our health beyond our digestion. So when we have this overgrowth of bacteria in our digestive tract, some of the consequences of that is that we do not, oops, we do not digest our food properly. So in not digesting our food properly, we do not absorb the nutrients from the food we're eating. So we can be eating a beautiful diet and we are not getting the nutrition from it that we should be getting. The other thing that SIBO can do is it can cause an overgrowth, I mean, excuse me, not an overgrowth, it can cause um, an inability to digest fats properly. And this is a problem because fats play a major role in our nervous system, fats play a major role in the health of our brain, and fats play a major role in the health of our skin. Fats are, healthy fats are really, 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 really important for our health. And so if you're not processing fat properly, then you're going to probably have health challenges in those areas, as was the case with me, right? My skin ha is very dry and thereby I am I have wrinkles more than I probably should have. Um, my, um, my, when, when my body wasn't healthy, the way that I, the symptoms manifested were in neurological symptoms, were in brain symptoms, right? Because I wasn't getting the nutrition that my body needed in order to keep those systems healthy. So super, super important that we don't let ourselves live with an un, undiagnosed underlying digestive issue. In my case, doctors kept running large intestine panels on me. And every time, sure, we would find something off because if you're off in your small intestine, your large intestine's not gonna be healthy either. So we'd go about correcting that and then we wouldn't, uh, we'd stop there, I'd feel better. And then a few weeks later, sure enough, symptoms would start coming back. Why was that? Because small intestine bacterial overgrowth is different than large intestine um, the imbalances and it has to be treated in a different way. 
So what are some of the symptoms that might indicate that you have it? I've talked about the digestive issues. If you have, you know, issues with your skin, acne can be can be a symptom of that. If you don't, if you know you just don't digest fat well, it could be dysfunction in the large intestine, but it also can be a dysfunction in the small intestine. If you ha run labs and you're low on nutrition and you just can't figure out why that is, you might have an undiagnosed SIBO case going on. Pretty much any situation, any health situation that you haven't resolved, getting a SIBO test is a good idea. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna talk about what you do if you have SIBO, because it is not the same thing, as I said, that you do when you have other um, digestive issues. It is a different journey, and it's one that you wanna really make sure that you understand because you can actually create a worse problem for yourself if it's not handled correctly. So I look forward to talking with you in the next video and I hope you all are having a really beautiful day.